next from CBS Sports, the NCAA Basketball Championship. Seattle is a very special city, the Emerald of the Northwest. It's my hometown. It was a great place to grow up. And to me, there's no other place in the world quite like it. The calm waters of the Puget Sound, majestic Mount Rainier, and the snow-capped Cascades. I love Seattle and its people the way I love music and the way I love basketball. And tonight, like a symphony, they all come together in a wonderful, almost magical way. Everybody, nice big smiles. Hellos, how are you? Welcome to Seattle. Welcome to the kingdom. It's closed at game time, and then it, it opens uh, afterwards. Switch at 15. We're going in at 12. One, two, three, and... Kingdom in Seattle, Washington. CBS Sports welcomes you to the national championship game between the University of Michigan and Seton Hall. And good evening, everybody. I'm Jim Nance. On October 15th, 293 Division I colleges and universities open practice in pursuit of one goal, winning this championship trophy. Three weeks ago, 64 teams were selected to participate in this year's tournament, and tonight we are down to two. Michigan and Seton Hall, neither of whom has ever won the national championship. And so as we look for the Wolverines and the Pirates provide us with that one shining moment, it is my pleasure to introduce the man who will be calling the game for us, Brent Musburger. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Everything's getting ready down here. What a remarkable tournament this has been. Princeton almost eliminating Georgetown. And when you filled out your brackets, how many of you wrote down Seton Hall and Michigan for the final Monday? I mean, Michigan has an interim coach, Steve Fisher, 19 days ago, got word after Bill Frieder took the job at Arizona State. Well, he got it when Bo Schembechler moved in front of the microphone in Ann Arbor and made this announcement. I don't want uh, somebody from Arizona State coaching the Michigan team. And uh, I want that understood. Michigan man is going to coach Michigan. And uh, so that's the way it will be. And what a Michigan man he has become. Five straight wins, only one away from a national title. And moments ago, this warm embrace in the stands right behind him. Coach Fisher's wife, Angie, and Janice Frieder, the wife of Bill. Bill not here in the arena tonight, we understand, but certainly watching the Wolverines back on television. That was a marvelous scene. It was, Grant. They're the first people that get into heaven, coaches' wives. It's a very, very tough job. Helps uh, coach get into heaven if you got a player like that fella, Glenn Rice. Glenn Rice has been burning it up. He's just points away from beating Bill Bradley's all-time NCAA scoring record. 
He has been doing it with the finest perimeter shooting I have ever seen in an NCAA tournament. You know, not only is it Rice, but it's this entire Michigan team that can shoot a high percentage. They have. They led the nation in field goal shooting percentage this year and last year as well. But they are facing, Brent, a basketball team that is holding teams down under 40%. The last time we had a team do this well in the tournament was Georgetown back in Seattle. Look at that. 37% defensive field goal percentage. That is tremendous. And here is one of their main reasons why they got here. Andrew Gaze, who played for the Australian team, not only in the 88 Olympics, but also in the 84. And uh, what dimension does he bring to this Seton Hall team? Well, Brent, in addition to the things like passing and good judgment, the man has such great experience for this ball club, and he knows when to explode, just doesn't make mistakes. Billy, how about your game analysis prior to this championship? Well, I think the keys are early on in this ball game. Green and Robinson in the backcourt. That point guard position with judgment is going to be so important for both ball clubs early on. And then that war down inside. Both teams blessed with great bangers on the inside. Who's going to get the boards? That's going to be a real key. Wild Rice, we're talking about Glenn Rice. He has been absolutely wild from the three-point range. If he can continue the shooting, it really will extend the Seton Hall defense. And good day, mates. Hey, Seton Hall, they have had guys come off the bench with superlative performances each and every game, and that's what they'll need tonight. And we say a good day to a mate of ours, James Brown. James, how about these two teams tonight? All right, Brent, thank you very much. I had a chance to talk with both coaching staffs, and they're very comfortable, fully armed coming into tonight's battle because there is no concern about injuries with either squad. However, there is some concern about the way the players are approaching the game. Seton Hall, typically comfortable and pressure-free in all of their NCAA tournament games, had an extremely and atypically quiet bus ride over. The coaching staff would like to believe it's because they're focused and not nervous. Michigan, smiling bunch of guys teasing each other, and Steve Fisher, who almost was not admitted into the arena because he didn't have his proper credentials. Glenn Rice told me, hey, coach, we want you on the bench, but we can get it done for you. We'll find out if that's prophetic as Seton Hall and Michigan do battle for the NCAA championship right here on CBS. From Seattle, CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship game is sponsored by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Merrill Lynch, an investment firm built on a tradition of trust. IBM, the people, product, and resources to help you find the right solution. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Kingdom in Seattle, the site of tonight's national championship, and let's go to Frank Ballon to meet our starting lineups. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington, for tonight's national championship game between the Michigan Wolverines and the Seton Hall Pirates. And now let's meet the starting lineups for Michigan at forward, a 6'7 senior from Flint, Michigan, number 41, Glenn Rice. For Seton Hall at forward, a 6'7 junior from Melbourne, Australia, number 10, Andrew Gaze. For Michigan at forward, a 6'9 senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 35, Loy Vaught. For Seton Hall at forward, a 6'8 senior from New York, New York, number 24, Daryl Walker. For Michigan at center, a 6'10 junior from Romulus, Michigan, number 52, Terry Mills. For Seton Hall at center, a 6'8 senior from Columbus, Puerto Rico, number 25, Ramon Ramos. For Michigan at guard, a 6'2 junior from Cambridge, Massachusetts, number 21, Ramil Robinson. For Seton Hall at guard, a 6'1 senior from Brooklyn, New York, number 15, Gerald Green. For Michigan at guard, a 6'7 senior from Rosemont, Illinois, number 20, Mike Griffin. For Seton Hall at guard, a 6'3 senior from the Bronx, New York, number 23, John Morton. And introducing the head coaches for Michigan in his first season, Steve Fisher. For Seton Hall in his seventh season, P.J. Carlesimo. Neither school has ever won a national championship. Back with the tip-off in a moment. Six-game winning streak. 
to win a national championship. Michigan got to this point after trailing Xavier and South Alabama at the half. Then they blew away North Carolina, Virginia, and in a tough, tough game on Saturday down to Illinois. As for Seton Hall, after struggling a bit in their first game against Southwest Missouri State, they really came alive. They were favored by 10 in that one. Then they put away Evansville. Then handed Indiana and Nevada Las Vegas the worst records they've ever saw first in the NCAA tournament. And for Duke, they were down 18 and beat them by 17. Their average margin, 15. They won the coin flip. They'll wear their home whites. Michigan coming down in the maize and blue with the first set. Rice makes it a 2 nothing game. Trent straight man the man Gaze got caught behind a screen early on. He's going to have to fight over screens much tougher than that. Morton's three rims out. And Griffin rebounds for the Wolverines. Neil Robinson brings it down. Great strength. He'll go to the glass with the left hand. Missing. And it is Walker down with the game's first rebound. Mickey Crowley, your referee. John Clardy and Tom Rucker, the two umpires. Green bangs in a three. If there's been one major change in this Seton Hall team the last month or so is that Green is looking for the shot early. There's Gaze fighting over the screen. Got out hard on Rice that time. Knocked the ball back near the midcourt line. They set another screen and he comes around. And Gaze dueling Rice for the ball. Rice comes back. It'll be five on four now. Lost the dribble. That was a dangerous play for Rice for the simple reason he should have given it up. Gaze was wide open on the other end of the floor. He said he's a heady ball player. He would have got an easy two on the exchange. Green and Robinson have dueled away as youngsters up in a tournament in the Boston area. The best of New York against the best of Boston. Ramos partially blocked on the inside and Bott yanks it away and here's Ramil Robinson again. There are those bangers on the inside. Mills with about two inches on Ramos. Bad shot. He makes it anyway. Huh? He took a bad one on Saturday that wound up being a brilliant one when Sean Higgins put it back in to propel him into this national championship. Wow. He was getting good position on Hughes inside. Bad pass by Gaze. Let him a little bit too much to the left, but Vaught is playing right behind Walker. Walker should be able to handle the ball in the low post. P.J. Carlissimo has won Achilles' heel in the Big East, and that is Syracuse. And there are any number of similarities between Michigan and Syracuse. Good point guard, tall men on the inside, and that one banged in by Vaught. And Michigan moves out to a 6-3 lead and looks good doing it, Billy. A big shot by Vaught. He's only shooting 41% in the tournament after shooting 66% going into the tournament. So Steve Fisher has to be happy with that. Gaze off a fake, got Griffin to jump in him. And Mickey Crowley picks up the foul. Griffin is the lowest scoring player in the NCAA Final Four, and he had cannot afford to help out inside because Gaze will hang out beyond the three-point line and get those cross-court passes. So Griffin better stick with him or he'll be hitting some threes. Green around to the top. And they work to Morton from the perimeter over Rice. Up high, knocked away by Walker. But it is Michigan that touched it last. Did Ramos go down hard that time? Not hard, not hard enough to hurt that man. He is like an oak tree on the inside. Has not played well in the NCAA tournament compared to regular season, but you could expect a big game from him tonight. Morton's three. Three-point basket by Glenn Rice could have some problems with Morton. Morton's shooting well from the outside now. Rice is not quick enough if Morton puts the ball on the floor and penetrates by him. Gaze chasing Rice all over the floor right now. There's a screen set down low on Gaze. Great D, great D, great D. All the cutters were covered, and when Ramil Robinson picked up his dribble, which he could not afford to do, there's just nobody to throw to. Billy, I want you to watch Gaze because as he goes out after him, you would think that if he has to work this hard at the defensive end, it could well affect him offensively. But Morton misfiring. Ramos going for the rebound. Lost it, and it goes over to Michigan. Ramon Ramos from the Puerto Rican national team. He played for them over in Korea. He was scouted by Seton Hall ever since he was 15 years old. P.J. Carlissimo has coached the team down there in the summer league. Quick turnaround. This 
missing, and it is Rice with an offensive oh. rebound and a second miss. Seton Hall's ball. Then Rice put that up a little quicker. Now, one of the advantages I see him having over Gaze is when he can get the ball inside 15 feet. He's a much better leaper. Should be able to do some damage inside. Billy, five of Seton Hall's for six shots had been from the three-point line. That time, they punched it in low to Walker. No basket out of bounds on the drive, but there was a case where Morton was able to go right by Rice. Sometimes it's very difficult to guard a man different than the one that's guarding you. You get crisscrossed when you're going back down court. That's what's happening to Rice. Ramos chases bought out high. Mills being worked over by Walker, who is a very tough defensive player. Walker staying right with him, and he forces the turnover, and that's the third here by Michigan. Watch Walker duel away. One of the brilliant things that the former New York State High School star does out of All Hollows High School in the city, and he did a great job that time. Ramos off the glass, and it is Vaught going to work on the inside and drawing the foul from Ramos. Brent Ramos still struggling offensively. Had a great year this year, all Big East first teamer, but just has not been able to get it done offensively in the tournament. Full court press for the first time by Seton Hall. They turned Duke over a few times in his press. Get it back to Robinson. He'll go all the way if he gets daylight. Yanked off by Ramos. Great defense that time by Walker. Hard to handle him in the open court. Billy, when you take on someone like Ramos, even if he's not shooting well, how about the wear and tear physically by the time you get to the last 10 minutes? Well, that's what's been uh, Seton Hall's big advantage against other clubs, but Michigan can come back in with Hughes to play him for a while. And Walker on a slick turnaround, his first field goal. Walker, Green, and Morton, the two guards, have both hit threes, and Seton Hall up 8-6 as a result of that. Now Rice maneuvering, and Gaze right with him, man able to jump up over him and it's his second field goal and that was just great shooting and not poor defense because Gaze made the great play to fight over the screen or Michigan, number just Rice squares Sean up Higgins so beautifully on the shot now we have our first two subs that's Mark Hughes number 55 the interchange with Bott coming out and now we have Sean Higgins he was of course the hero on Saturday afternoon he was in the right spot against Illinois game is tied we're in the early moments here of the national championship between Seton Hall in the white and Michigan with the Big Ten in the dark jersey. Another three off, and Robinson has a defensive rebound deflected on the pass to right to Higgins, backcourt. and he threw it into the backcourt. He has turned it over. Backcourt violation. Now, that was just a mental breakdown by the young man and the fact that he knows that Robinson's the guy they want to have the ball on the break. He just wasn't in the front court yet. It's going to be an interesting matchup for Higgins down here on Gaze, and Gaze is a very intelligent player, sizing up that he's being guarded by a rookie. See if he tries to pick him off inside. There he goes. Gaze with the three, rims out, Mills tracks it down, and again gets it into Robinson's hands. He pulls up on Green and hits the two. Michigan up as the result of that field goal. Off to Gaze on a cut off his foot and over to Higgins. Here comes Robinson again, three on one. Bounce pass, nice. <laughs> Ramir Robinson getting to be a master leading that fast break now. Doesn't get caught for the charges. Gaze is giving Higgins a real lesson, though. He got off two shots on him in a hurry. He's coming right off screens. There he is again. Back into Morton's hands, and it's an offensive foul called on Morton. Rice able to draw at that time. That's the first on him, and the second team foul on Seton Hall. We're going to have our first commercial timeout here at the evening at the 14-16 mark, and Michigan up by four. Welcome to Billy, Michigan, leading by four, and Ramil Robinson here with one of his three assists. Well, we said the sharpest point, meaning the point guards, which one would be the key? So far, Ramil Robinson has pulled up and taken the jumper. On that particular play, he led Glenn Rice perfectly for the easy layup on the break. And a wild Rice. He has hit his first three shots, missed only once. Three of four for the game now. Knocked away by Walker, but Rice is there. He'll hoist the three. Out of bounds, Higgins goes for it, but it's Seton Hall's ball. Walker was standing right there. Seton Hall, three of ten. They've taken seven from three-point land, but Ramos with a layup. 
and Green answers as to who's the sharpest point. If Seton Hall can thank anybody for being in this championship game, it is Green who brought him right from disaster against Duke and led that club very well. Robinson capable of posting up and got on the inside and drew the personal foul on Green. Billy Bench strength is so important for Seton Hall. Michigan went to its bench first. What about the Pirates? Well, we talked about Cooper going to be the first man coming in tonight. We talked about Gooday Mates, and we're talking about that incredible bench strength that Seton Hall has shown going nine deep and getting quality from every man they bring in. I'm surprised they didn't put Cooper on. Yes, they did. They put him on Rice. Started. That'll give Gaze an opportunity to rest a little bit defensively. He'll chase Higgins now, and he's out on him. They get into Mills, turn around in the paint, rimmed out, and Robinson in low, puts it back. So Ramil Robinson is off to a fabulous start as the leader here of the Wolverines. Many people consider Ramil the finest guard in the country coming out of high school. He had to sit out his freshman year uh, at Michigan, but is coming on strong now as a true All-American caliber player. Ramos, goaltending, put it down. Ramon Ramos against the Soviet Union over in Korea scored 16 points in the Olympics and pulled down eight rebounds. Now watch this pump fake on the inside. Gets his man up in the air and then uses that wide body to score. No question about the goal, 10 on Rice. It's a two-point lead by the Wolverines. That's on the inside, and that is Cooper holding Rice down on the inside. He was trying to get free, and he Rouse just charged, reached out and grabbed it. It's away from the ball. Good screen by Mills. He's got Cooper caught, and Cooper tried to just use that upper body strike the strength on Rice, who would like to post him up down inside a little bit. Robinson deep in the corner now for the Wolverines. Ramil realizing he has Gaze on him, would like to go by him. There's the pick on Gaze. Robinson gets it inside and can't put it down. Walker quickly into the hands now of Green. Walker off the dribble. Misfiring, knocked back to Gaze. He'll come inside, and Ramos wasn't expecting the pass. Yeah, tough pass, and Ramos hurt his finger on that one, too. Just a bullet pass, a little bit too close. Didn't have the spacing for that type of play. Ramos shaking off some of that pain as Vaught returns. You can see that Steve Fisher realizing and respecting that Seton Hall bench is using substitutions early, much earlier than when the players are actually tired, which I think is a great move. Screen out high, left-handed dribble, and on the inside, knocked out of bounds. Did you see how Ramos reacted initially? He thought it was a foul. Great reverse dribble by Ramil Robinson. Doesn't mind taking it inside against the strongest of people. Excellent call by that official on calling it a good block as opposed to a touch foul. But Ramil thinks that he can take Green inside. They played against each other for the first time in the Boston shootout as high school players. Robinson has had the advantage of Green throughout those early contests. They want that ball in Ramil's hands. He'll dump it into Hughes. Gets the roll. These teams match up so well inside against each other as far as power and strength. Gaze left open. Missed the three. Rice rebounds. That Hughes. Robinson two on one. He'll take it on in. Yanked away. Off the miss by Walker. And it's Seton Hall's ball. They trail it by four. There's one of those decisions for a point guard. If Ramil would have taken it more to the center and pulled up, he'd have had the angle for the pass. Ramos comes way out. Here is Cooper. Looking to get an angle to pounce the ball into Walker inside. They couldn't get it. This is good interior defense by the Wolverines here so far tonight. Stepping out is Green, lifts it three, and only one shot as it's Rice again underneath for the rebound. Brennan's underrated rebounder is Glenn Rice. He skies and he knows how to get good position. He's just not a shooter out there. Oh, good hedge that time by Walker. Fine defensive play. Rice alone for the three. Ramos runs the miss down. Imagine some of the other coaches, particularly a Dean Smith from North Carolina, wondered where that shot was when they played him. 
He didn't even hit the rim during those games. Ramos from the perimeter missed everything, but Gaze was underneath and drew the foul. So Higgins fouling Gaze with the score 16 12. Michigan leading Seton Hall and 10 and a half minutes left in the first half of this national championship game. Griffin returning. And also Anthony Evan in the game for the first time. Brent, he has been on fire, 17 points in the last two games, actually outproducing Ramos from the post. Also, like Griffin, Rice will take his first break. Gaze has missed his only two field goals, but it's a free throw with Ramos also being given a breather. So Fisher doing a job of rotating his entire starting lineup and giving everybody a breather here early. An interesting philosophy and substitution. Dr. Tom Davis up in Iowa uses the same thing. He feels that if you take a player out for short spurts early, he doesn't come quite so tired over the long haul. So Steve Fisher is implementing the same system. And now P.J. Carlissimo using some of the same tactics. Gay is sitting down. Morton on the floor with Green. Cooper is still out there. Avent on the inside with Walker. Higgins has range in that jumper. Cooper better get out on him a little further. Mills backed his way in. Offensive rebound. And a good put back by Vaughn with the coach's wife cheering on that move. And the lead four again. 18-14 Michigan. Third team uh, all Big Ten player. Vaughn had been solid. There's Higgins on the rebound. Higgins at six foot nine. You don't realize how tall this Michigan club is on the floor. 6'10", 6'9", 6'8". Griffin at about six, five and a half. Bill steps out. Griffin inside now to Ramil Robinson who posts up his man. That's six points for the point guard. Now here's where Griffin is really valuable. Although he doesn't score a lot, he's got a good passing angle being that tall out in the top of the key. Amen. Jump pass over to the side and it's Walker. You know, I have a feeling, Brent, even though we've passed the 10 minute mark, that these teams are still kind of feeling each other out. One thing is evident, and that is Real Robinson could be headed for a huge night. Higgins on a turnaround, partially deflected. Here is Green. Green will bring it down. Robinson watching him, so he comes over to the left. And no daylight for penetration as Robinson got over there and sealed up quickly. Now it is Morton looking down the baseline. Walker runs it down in the corner. An offensive rebound. One of the things that he does very well. Ramil Robinson looking a little tired right now. Trying to, he's matched up with Cooper in this lineup, so Cooper can post him down low. Morton. Michigan got caught in a bad mix matchup there. Robinson with six points and four assists. Listening to Coach Fisher as he comes across the midcourt line. They punch in down low to Vaught, and he traveled. He turned it over. That's the fifth Michigan turnover. The Wolverines leading it by two, 20 to 18. We'll take a timeout at the 19 mark. Well, an early story. Here in Seattle tonight has been the defensive work of the Wolverines holding Seton Hall to 35 percent from the field and forcing them to take nine shots on the outside. They've made only two of those three pointers. Seton Hall trailing it by a field goal coming back down now against that Michigan defense. Rice on Morton. Morton's got the quickness factor on him. See if he can get a shot off. Mills taking Avent on the inside. Now it is Morton running underneath with Rice who has returned, chasing him. Real good upper body defense on the inside by Hughes and Mills, not giving Seton Hall. There's the quickness by Morton. And Morton, what he did against Dante, Mike Krzyzewski, when he helped lead Seton Hall from behind to a victory in the semifinal, has tied it up here at 20 with seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. Brent, that's really a tough matchup for Glenn Rice to be expected to stay with a quicker guy like Morton. Rice on the inside. 
inside, and Walker is fouled up over the top. And Walker continues to do an outstanding rebounding job, drawing the first personal from the Michigan Stars. You know, this Seton Hall club lost Mark Bryant last year, who was a first-round draft choice by the NBA. Not many people expected him to do much. They were picked seventh in their own conference preseason. There again, Morton has taken Rice. Green's three, the tenth one that they have attempted, and his second successful one here, putting Seton Hall ahead 23-20. Robinson went all the way against Illinois, dishing off the pass out of bounds on the inside, and that's the sixth Wolverine turnover. Glenn Rice going back down court, looked over to Romeo Robinson, said that was my fault. I mean, the ball was thrown exactly where it should have been. Demetrius Caleb off the bench, but it is Higgins and not Robinson who will be given a break here with Seton Hall up 23-20, 6.52 to go. And now it is Morton with the three. That's 12 unanswered points by the Seton Hall Pirates. They lead it 26-20. the rice who snaps it off the turnaround and he was fouled by gaze that's gaze's first personal the young man from melbourne australia here for his junior year in college well, will return down under he'll soon be 24 years old he would have to apply for an extra year of eligibility his father lindsey gaze is the john wooden of australia and runs a team down in the melbourne area and that club badly needs Gaze, their star to return as a player, and so Dad said, nah, -uh, he's not coming back for a senior year. He's coming back to play for me. Uh, Brent, I have a little bit of problem with that in terms of the international player, and I don't think it was anything that P.J. had set up to have a guy use for one year, but I really question whether that is a good move for the future. You see a lot of people going over to get an international player for one year to help him shore up an individual position. Yeah, there'd be some Soviets uh, who would be. Well, the Yugoslavians after. have an, op, an, an awful lot of outstanding, young, talented players, and bring a player in for one year, use them to have a quality team, and send them back home might not be in the best interest of the game. But it is certainly within the rules. Exactly. And here he is in a national championship game, along with Ramon Ramos. Good D. Mills jumping out over to Robinson. Caleb on the right, back to Vaught trailing and Avent coming down on the inside, and there's a blocking foul, and they're pointing at Wigginton. Wigginton, a very difficult guy to go ahead and do something on the break because he's so small, low to the floor, kind of like a Muggsy Bogues from the Charlotte Hornets. But this is a good play by Mills to hit ahead. The man has excellent hands. Good decision-making process by Robinson. But see how low to the floor Wigginton is? Very difficult to get in against him. Took away an easy two. Robinson into the paint. That's eight points. I don't know if there's a guard in the country that takes it to the hole any better than Ramil. Rice out here with Gaze. Mills taking the inside pass away, so Bolsey has to step out. Now, Gaze kind of lulls you to sleep as a defender. Looks like he doesn't even want to score, and then all of a sudden you turn your head, and he looks to pop the shot on you. Both teams playing great man-to-man -man defense on the inside. Wigginton inside with the bigger fella. The smallest man in Division 1A, 5-4, Pookie Wigginton. Took it on the inside and hit the field goal, and the crowd loved that one. Coming down the line now, and Robinson with his 10th point of the evening. What's happening is that the big men inside for Seton Hall are playing such great man-to-man -man defense on themselves, they're not switching over to help as Robinson penetrates. They're going to have to help a little bit more of the guards because he's just going in and scoring at will. Seton Hall flashes very well to the outside for that three. You know that, Billy? They'll take a man down low, yep. and they'll bring him out around that screen. Morton's looking for it. Here's where Rice wants to switch. Good play by Rice. He switched back so he didn't get stuck with Morton. 
Both teams playing smart basketball Look here. how they come inside out. Missed the three Ooh. that time. Michigan rebounding. Down by two. They can tie or go ahead this trip. So it seems to me that Ramil getting a little tired here instead of really pushing the ball down the floor like he normally does. He's kind of walking it. Rice bangs it in, and that was a two. That's ten points for the two-time Big Ten scoring champion. And he only needs 29 more points to become the all-time Big Ten scoring Wiginton champion. with a great pass on the inside. And that was responsible for the foul. Now here are those solid screens down inside. You see Gay's trying to come over the top with Rice, and he has to go so wide on that screen that he can't get there in time, and all Rice needs is that split second. Yeah, again, Billy, if they need Gay's three-point shooting, and he's a superb outside shooter, when you have to chase and work that hard on a great offensive player, sometimes it'll take a little something out of you defensively, and he might not be up to torching the net in the second half as he was on Saturday. Terry Mills with one personal being given a break. Gaze has missed his only two field goal attempts. This is Bolsey at the free throw line for Seton Hall. Game is tied. Bolsey shooting two. Seton Hall a very good free throw shooting club. 75% on the year. Both teams very solid from the line. Steve Fisher continues to rotate those big men, trying to keep them fresh. He's very much aware of how Seton Hall has worn clubs out, particularly the last 10 minutes of a ball game. Missed his free throws. Higgins is quietly getting up on the boards tonight and doing a good job. Oh, good cut. Traveling. Seven Michigan turnovers. We've got a timeout at the 346 mark. Tied at 28, Seton Hall and Michigan for a national championship. To the first half, Michigan and Seton Hall in deadlock, Billy. Well, Brent, with just 346 to go in the half, we can see this is relatively a low-scoring game. Michigan does not do well under 80, 2 and 5. You can see Seton Hall better tempo to play either style. Here's one of the trends to watch for. Seton Hall has brought its game to the outside against the taller Wolverines. This time, they punch it into Ramos. But for the year, they have averaged only 14 three-point attempts a game. Tonight, Seton Hall has already hoisted up 12 in the first half. They lead it 30-28. Great sign for P.J. to get Ramos off the bench and immediately score from the inside. Here's Rice responding with a three, and he has 13. Brent, he doesn't even tickle the net when he hits it. Those shots from the outside are right on the money. 13 leaves him only 12 away from the all-time NCAA scoring record in a tournament held by Senator Bill Bradley. Ramos with his man going down, couldn't put it away. And it's Robinson three on two to Caleb. Nice. He gives it back to Higgins. Beautiful look away pass both by Caleb and Robinson. Good teamwork. Michigan 33, Seton Hall 30. And it out of the two and a half minute mark, first half. Robinson on Gaze now. See if Gaze would take him inside a little bit, make him to work down low. There he's going down low, but not getting the ball. <laughs> Green tries a penetrating move. Higgins slaps it away. And it'll be two on one with Green rushing back into it. Robinson goes all the way. Higgins tries to knock it down and can't. Bet they rode Higgins right out from under the basket on that play. Had to be a foul. He was the shooter. Whistle before the shot. Pushing foul going against Michigan. Well, the worst game to referee is a game that has a big screen behind it for the fans. They see all the replays, and that's what the boo's about. Only five team fouls against the Wolverines. Here you see Ramil putting it up. Now watch, Higgins, he has the tap, and he, they ride him right out underneath. It has to be a foul on that play, no call. Did, did they ride him out, or did he throw a saddle up as he bent over backwards <laughs> on Green? He looked a little bit like a well, pretzel that he, time. He has to have the right to come down somewhere other than on somebody's back. 
Morton oh, has to get through Robinson, and the foul is going to be called on Ramil. That's his first personal foul. Well, there are no pads in basketball, but fellas uh, better be strong with upper body strength. And you can see Ramos just saying to Hughes, I I'd like a little more room in here, sir. Excuse me, please. Kind of like getting into some of the elevators here in Seattle. Gaze up on top. Higgins chasing him. They go in low again to Ramos against the double team. And now Gaze is open for the three. Cannot find it in Rice. Goes up high to get that rebound. That's the third or fourth time the night Rice has been above the rim to grab a rebound. They save it? Yes, they did. Ramil Robinson content to go down inside. Now, what Seton Hall may find if Ramil's going to go inside so much, they may be able to release a man and get an easy fast break because there's nobody back defensively, particularly with Griffith out of the game. Here's Robinson in low again, drawing the foul from Gaze. And there's a smiling Michigan athletic director and head football coach, Bo Schimbeckler. Well, taking a look at the way Ramil plays, he'd both like to have him maybe at a fullback in the goal line move right here. I mean, he's just going down inside and pulling people out of the way. For Michigan, shooting to Ramil Robinson. Ramil born in Jamaica. Moved to Boston when he was six. That's a uh, marvelous story about him. He was born and abandoned by his mother three years after they moved to Cambridge, Massachusetts. Slept in the hallways of a school, spent nights with friends' families before being adopted. And the folks who adopted him are here tonight watching Ramil Robinson turn in a spectacular first half. Norton misses, and the ball is batted out of bounds by Rice. And Brent, on that story, it's a, a very nice scene that his stepfather saw him play the other day for the very first time. It's a mailman back in the uh, Boston area, and someone donated the money to get the family out here for this game, and it is truly a very warm story here tonight. Well, that was Green getting in on the inside for P.J. Carlissimo, and Michigan leading it 35-32. We're coming down to last shot time here in the first half. They'll take one. It's Walker on Rice. So a good matchup for P.J. Carlissimo against Michigan's most dangerous scorer. Morton. Now what helps Michigan is the fact with Caleb in the game, they can use Robinson down inside. He doesn't have to be the primary ball handler. Too early for him to try to go one-on-one. -on -one. He'd like it with about eight seconds to go. Now it's eight. Robinson is fouled by Green, his second personal. At the top of the show, we talk about who was going to have the sharpest point, meaning which point guard, Green or Robinson, was going to have the best game. So far, it's been all Ramil Robinson. Bott replaces Hughes. But a very good time to press now if you're Michigan because you want to make Seton Hall use up as much of this six seconds getting the ball up the floor as possible. Billy, well, take a look at the uh, the face of Ramil Robinson as he steps back up to the free throw line. I mean, this this young man has really been a warrior here in Seattle, not only Saturday but here tonight. He's the Iron Man. He's already scored 13. Seton Hall will hurry to get off a shot. Green will bring it all the way down, missing, and that'll end the first half. Robinson's 14 points paced the Michigan Wolverines. Andrew Gaze held only two free throws for Seton Hall. It's 37-32, and our coverage of this championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Nike, who reminds you to just do it. Right guard sports stick from Gillette, antiperspirant and deodorant. Anything less would be uncivilized. UPS, 
For guaranteed overnight delivery from coast to coast, UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. And by Allstate for home, auto, and life insurance. You're in good hands with Allstate. Twilight descends upon the Emerald City of Seattle. And inside the Kingdome at halftime, Michigan leading Seton Hall by five as Ramil Robinson and Glenn Rice have combined for 27 of the Wolverines 37 points and for you Seton Hall followers you might notice this is almost an identical score to Saturday's game against Duke and that one the Pirates trailed 38 33 at halftime it's a five point margin in this one tonight 37 32 with Michigan on top and so we are one half away from crowning our final NCAA champion of the decade you know 10 years ago who could have envisioned the enormous growth of this sport and who could have imagined the changes in this game created in this decade by the addition of the 45 second clock and the three point shot. But just where is all this growth and change leading us. Well James Brown has sampled the experts for a glimpse at what might lie ahead for college basketball as we prepare to enter the 90s. Now they have eight seconds to go and Hunt will try for a three and hit it. Hunt with the basket. If you want to make the three point shot worth an extra point, it should be moved a couple feet back further. Can he battle? I'm sure one of the things that will happen before too long, I would guess the basket's going to have to be raised. I'd rather see us go two 22-minute halves in college basketball. Just about the only thing the basketball community agrees upon is that there's no shortage of ideas. Many see the court itself taking on a new dimension. A wide lane will be adopted in some form. I think it's going to be increasingly a three-point game. Uh, the 10-second line will be eliminated. I see the game as being a very wide-open game. It'll become a player's game uh, and a fun game to watch. I really think the basket should be raised. And, uh, you know, right now it's so easy to score. I think they ought to raise the baskets to maybe four inches. 10-4 would be good. The only reason it's at 10 feet right now, because Dr. Naismith didn't have any other place to put the basket. It was on that wooden rail around the gymnasium. And that though, in those days, if you were 6'1", 6'2", you were a giant, so to speak. The baskets being raised would be a huge mistake. Then the premium would be on the rebounding even more. There'd be more missed shots. And then you'd have the, the better rebounding teams winning uh, even a higher percent than they I think that's a, a, an unsolvable problem. I don't think that there's any legislation that can be passed. I don't think there's anything that can be done that will ever keep uh, unethical alumni out of the recruiting picture. The intense pressure to win continues to mount. The game is a big business now, and coaches must produce or face the consequences. I, I think it's hypocritical for a person at one point to say that winning is the only thing that's important for you to work here and then the next token say well why didn't you make certain that this kid didn't go to school and, and it's just conflicting uh, philosophical uh, views I think and it's foolish for these educators to run around and say look what's going on in athletics and then you're just ruthlessly firing me. This is Henderson with that quick first stepping. I would like that in all the decision making bodies that comprise the NCAA and this NCAA tournament that when they focus on things, they don't just focus on the press, TV, uh, money. Whenever you're making a decision, the main focus should be the quality of play and life for the student athlete. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Nike, who reminds you to just do it. Gillette and the Gillette Afra Plus shaving system, Gillette, the best a man can get. UPS for guaranteed overnight delivery from coast to coast. UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. And by Allstate, for home, auto, and life insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. 
the half of this national championship game Michigan with a five point lead Billy I want to suggest that Ramon Ramos has not been the same in this tournament since he took that bad fall down in Tucson in the first couple of rounds down there. certainly statistically has not been the same but Brent what has been great for P.J. Carlissimo has been able to come off the bench with guys that have given him almost 20 points per game tonight the inside players from the bench have produced absolutely zero so Ramos is going to have to produce in the second half now the other side of it take a look at the Michigan defense it has been superb tonight. Meanwhile, Seton Hall not doing as well as they normally do. And Michigan shooting 50% from three-point range. You'll see that that Michigan defense has been forcing the Pirates out to the perimeter. Now, the point guard comparison that Billy brought up at the top of the broadcast, Ramil Robinson has been spectacular. But he has not been given a break until we hit the intermission. He's played every minute. As for the big guns, well, Glenn Rice with his 13 points. He's on pace for 26. Gaze without a field goal and only two free throws. And he has been working hard on defense, and it could be troubling him at the offensive end. So we get started. Let's see what Seton Hall does here to come from behind here in the second half. Michigan has looked very impressive. Brent, I think both teams are going to show quicker feet in this second half. It was a very slow paced first half. They might have been trying to save themselves a little bit. Remember, neither of these clubs had been in the championship before in terms of the, uh, the national title. I think they were playing a little bit under wraps. Green punches in now to Walker, who goes to work, and it's blocked by Mills. And there is Ramil Robinson. So with a five-point lead, which is big in a championship game, now a block, and Michigan comes out with its first opportunity. Everything going the Wolverines' way right now. Rice missing on the three. Morton reaching in on Buck, fouled in. Now, one of the things that both of these teams do so well is come over from the weak side to help out whenever the ball goes in the post. And you can see Mills coming over to help out when he realized that Vaught was beat on the inside by Walker. A great block and turned it right into offense for Michigan. No spacing there to get the ball to Mills. Mills hits the turnaround. And it's 39-32, a seven point lead the biggest of the night for the Wolverines that was a smart play by Robinson once he dumped in he realized Mills had no room to operate took his man down under the basket Missing now at three-point land and foul on the inside by Ramos his second Brent very unusual the way these two teams are playing Seton Hall averages 14 three-pointers a game on the norm tonight that was their 15 three-point shot already on the other hand Michigan has been a great three-point shooting team but so far tonight they have only taken three, which is really out of character for these two clubs. And Cooper will replace Morton. Strictly due to foul problems right there. Again, that works out a little bit, in my estimation, in favor of Michigan. Because you don't have to guard Morton's one-on-one -on -one penetration. So it's a blocking foul against Michigan that time. You saw Rice again Charles, trying to rub Gaze off of Vaught. And Brent, I think you're right on the money. Gaze playing Rice is not only having to chase a great score and have his mind set on him, but he's getting pounded by those big screens set by the Michigan inside people. Well, that foul was on Vaught. They try to get it in low to Ramos, who comes up, and this time he gets it put down, and he'll move to the free throw line after Mills picks up his second. Ramon now a thousand point scorer at Seton Hall. Good job getting the ball down inside. And even though they've got people reaching for the arms, he shows that tremendous strength to put the ball back up inside. So a three point play for Carlissimo. Nine points for Ramos. It's 39 35. Michigan's turn. Now they've got Cooper on Rice. Rice steps out with Cooper chasing him, and that's a two-point field goal. Fifteen points for Glenn Rice. Green goes all the way, comes up short, run down in the corner by Rice, sends it deep to Robinson. Here's Mills over to Vaughn, and a beautiful pass from Mills, who threw a blind pass on Saturday to Sean Higgins. So Mills continues to play with some enthusiasm under Steve Fisher. And we're talking about a guy getting out at the break at six foot ten. 
They wanted Walker. They've turned it over. Bought to Griffin, and here's Robinson. And the Wolverine suddenly in control. He is so tough to handle on that break with that big upper body strength. Glenn Rice turns around, makes the perfect pass. It had to go up court so Robinson could get it. And there's the great pass by Mills. Not only the great pass, but how about the way he stepped off to the right-hand side to make sure the charge could not be called. Robinson shooting two. Smart play by Mills. And the third personal on Gaze as Robinson will shoot two. Ramil, a third-team All-Big Tenor this year, sure to be a preseason All-American type candidate next year. We've got a timeout. Michigan leading at 44 to 30. Bill Walton, who played one of the most spectacular championship games ever. That was for UCLA. He hit 21 of 22 against Memphis State in a victory by the Bruins. That game was played in St. Louis. Tonight, the star of the game has been Ramil Robinson. 15 points and six assists. He has not rested a minute in either Saturday's semifinal or tonight's championship game. Now Green, who is trying to find daylight against him, slips inside this time and comes up with a field goal. His first of the second half. Brent, I see a little bit of change in Seton Hall the last two times down the floor. Ramos has picked up his intensity. Green, likewise. They're going to need it as Vaught steps out and bangs it home, and it's now eight for Loy Vaught. A lot of people thought Vaught two years ago would be just a journeyman player at Michigan. He developed into a third-team all-big tenor and a great perimeter shooter. Cooper thought about it. Gaze will take the three. Still can't find the range. Vaught yanks off the miss. Griffin is getting that hand at six foot six right up in Gaze's face. Rice it. What a stroke that is. 18 for the evening. That'll take that smile out of your face. Well, he steps back a little bit on his jump shot, so even if you think you're there, he's fading away instead of going straight up in the air, and it's hard to block. Green coming down for the corner, has lost it. Michigan with the turnover. And the Wolverines, who are five of six from the field this half, come back down with their seventh grip. But I think Seton Hall is going to have to go inside and show they can get some inside game going because so far they've been working strictly on the perimeter. Griffin got that tip shot. Started every game for Michigan. Only averaging under, averaging under three a game, but valuable. Well, a physical difference beginning to show in this game. That size on the inside that the Wolverines possess becoming a huge factor now. There's a case where Ramil saw Walker coming over from the weak side to defend. He's got to swing that ball over to get a little better angle. Both teams very, very well coached. You think that uh, Carlissimo needs to just go to the inside game? Yeah, they've got to get back to the inside. They're settling so much on the perimeter, which has not been what brought them to this national championship game. They're going to start pounding down in there. Rice tries to run it down, and Griffin quickly hustles to it. Getting all the loose balls. Boy, they look sharp. Goes over to Seton Hall. They are down 49-37. Well, we talk about going inside. They've got Walker and Ramos. You need to let them get down in that double low box and start hitting the ball inside some. Side wanted Ramos. They've turned it over again. The green is starting to try to do too much on his own, Brent. It's getting away from their game plan. Vaught jumps it into Rice on the inside with a oh. turnaround. Walker takes it off, and now it's Morton. Morton into the middle to Green, who comes through and draws the foul on Griffin. Well, a reminder that at the conclusion of tonight's championship game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game, and in conjunction with that award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of both Michigan and Seton Hall. 
Higgins and Hughes substitution pattern that uh, Steve Fisher used so well in the first half starting to come in. So this team will be hard to wear down. Good double team from the weak side. Morton off the dribble through the foul. That's Rice's second. He'll come up and shoot a pair of free throws. Higgins has checked back in for the Wolverines. Uh, Brent, what Ramos has to realize is when they hit the ball down inside and he's being double teamed like that, the man that's going to be open is the man opposite him up out on the wing. Normally, that's Gaze, and tonight, Seton Hall has not been able to go to that type of alignment. Ramos sits down as Avent checks back in, and this bench production, which has fueled the Seton Hall run at a national championship has not been there tonight. Nope. Two points, and that was only two. Remember by Pookie Wigginton when the clock was running down and he went one on one inside. And this field goal can pull Seton Hall back to within 10 if successful. You notice Morton has those girdle pants underneath. There's been a rule change. Next year, those girdle pants must be the same as the regular pants in color. So you'd have to wear a white girdle next year. A simple change in the rules. Mills with a pick and a hard one on Green, allowing Robinson to bring it up now to the attack for Michigan. Oh, and it takes off jams at Ramil Robinson. again and now Higgins rebounding and quickly up the floor to you know who Robinson short now and Walker is off for Seton Hall Hayes who's been shut down over to Green who hoists the three Rice loses it and it'll be Seton Hall's ball Brent, on this play, the reason Robinson was able to go baseline, the defense relaxed once he went to the corner. They just assumed he'd pull the ball back out, but he's so strong going to the hole, he was able to go over the top of the dunk. And there are the parents who raised him back in Cambridge, Mass. Attended the same high school as Patrick Ewing. New York Nick star, who, of course, led Georgetown to a national championship right here in Seattle a few years back. Now it's Morton off the dribble with the left hand. Can't get the roll. That's the kind of night it is. It is breaking Michigan's way. The Wolverines searching for their first national championship, beaten in the title game by Indiana. In the late 70s, Lloyd Vaught checking in. Seton Hall is without a field goal, Billy, over the last four minutes. That's what they've been doing to other clubs. That, that national championship in 76, first time two teams from the same conference played for it. Bobby Knight's club coming away with a win. Even off the miss by Higgins. And Green gets it to Walker with a nice pass. Green is going to pick up the tempo a little bit, just exactly what he did against Duke to bring Seton Hall back. But do they have an answer to this young man right here, Ramil Robinson? He has orchestrated a tremendous game here tonight for the Wolverines. And Rice, when he gets open, has knocked it down. Now it's bought. Seton Hall trying to put together a run off this miss. It'll be green again. This is a very big trip for the Pirates. Well, that was a good kick by Ramil Robinson because Walker posted up on Vaught down inside and had him beat. 45 second shot. Vaught put back up to 45. Walker missed the jumper. Gets it back. Goes for the layup, but he travels. P.J.'s father. And watching from the stands here, he is the first coach sporting beard to appear in a national championship game in case you're wondering about that piece of trivia. Well, you know, Brett, the man that was sitting beside him, Richie Regan, of course, one of the great players for Seton Hall that took them to what then was also the national championship, the NIT, that they won. Longtime coach at Seton Hall as well, one of their great all-time backcourt players. So now, Caleb running the team, and Rice missing the three. I like the gamble by Steve Fisher, though, to take Robinson out. But right away, they get a field goal, and how long can they afford 
to rest for Neil Robinson. That becomes a factor now. It's 51-43. We've got to keep an eye on when Robinson is going to return. I think Fisher will use a timeout, give him another break here, use the commercial to rest him, and maybe run him right back in. Let's see what he elects to do. We're going to take a break and come right back. Well, the Michigan players are contributing here themselves. Look at Ramil Robinson get right in Caleb's face to tell him what he thought about his defensive effort that last trip down the floor. There, Helen and Lewis Ford who raised the young man back in Massachusetts and so proud of what he's accomplished. But they face a very tough defense, Billy, down the stretch. Well, they do. Uh, Seton Hall has been tough down the stretch, and you need notice that Ramil is still on the bench. I think, as I said, I think it's a smart move by Steve Fisher. He's still up around the double-digit mark. He knows he's going to need him for that last six minutes. He'd like him to be rested and probably go as long as he can here with him on the bench if he can keep the lead. Rice on a cut. Keeps going. No traveling called on that move. And 20 points for Glenn Rice. Now it's Gaze who's been very quiet. Giving it up. Back over to Morton. Gaze with only two free throws in the game. He's missed all four of his shots from the field. Here he is looking to get on the board, taking Griffin on the inside, electing not to go through with it. And it'll be Morton who'll step up. And Avent underneath. Got a roll that time. And that's their first field goal down on the inside off the bench. Trent, I, I cannot understand why Seton Hall has abandoned the punch in the ball inside. Because when they punch it in, that's how Gaze gets open when people try to slough off. He has been a non-factor tonight. Because Seton Hall has been constantly using the perimeter game. Robinson waiting to check back in. Fisher cannot wait any longer. Well, he's going to give him a, it's going to be a mount to about a five minute rest here before he gets back in. It's a be different fun. team without Ramil Robinson. That's for sure. 53 45, 10 and a half minutes. And now Seton Hall can apply a little pressure if they can come away with a successful trip this time. Avent goes to work on the inside, and the blocking foul is called. And Ramil Robinson set to check back in. Well, there was a case where Hughes did not move his feet on that defensive play because Avon had already committed himself to the point where there wasn't much he could do but take a bad shot. Ramon Ramos coming back into the game. Five team fouls against Michigan, only three against Seton Hall. Green coming down and Ramos collapsing to the floor and the foul is against Griffin. That's his third personal foul. Getting tough underneath. Really. It is, and Mills is going to come back, and you can see good help again from the weak side. Ramos goes up and just powers the ball down against Vaught and Griffin. Hughes goes out, Mills comes back in, so they gain about a two-inch advantage inside. Both teams just straight, hard-nosed man-to-man the entire night. Nothing complicated, but a lot of good hard work and good defensive teaching. David staying on the floor with Ramos. Morton off a of fake. And Higgins right there fouled him. That's his second. So reminded that the Masters begins Thursday and at 11.30 p.m. Thursday and Friday. You can watch highlights and then, of course, weekend coverage on Saturday and then the final round on Sunday afternoon. Walker on the floor with Ramos. So P.J. now has his starting lineup intact back on the floor. If they're going to make a run, they've got to make it over the next couple of minutes. Billy, they're doing a much better job defensively on Glenn Rice. Rice has hit only one of his last six field goals. That defense that has been the trademark of Seton Hall now starting to surface here. Well, he's 53 47. He's sitting down right now. So Steve Fisher didn't want to have Rice and Robinson out at the same time. He's got he wants to give Rice a couple of minutes as well. Look at those Seton Hall fans now getting into it. They punch in low now. Mills trying to get it done. And it was a hell ball. Possession arrow, Michigan. Excellent defense by Walker. 
Watch Walker. He uses his body, uses his lower legs, does not foul. Mills goes up. Now Rice has to come back in. Steve Fisher on both the Rice substitution and Robinson would like to have had at least another minute or so for both of them to sit on the bench, but he can't afford it now. Well, they got the 10 minute run to go. Higgins hoists a three. Three point basket by the Big field goal for the Wolverines. Seton Hall was closing back in when Higgins hit that three near the nine and a half minute mark. The young man's had 14 and 31 in the regional game, so he has come on very strong for Michigan after a drought at midseason. So from the Kingdom in Seattle with Billy Packer, I'm Brad Musburger. This is the national championship game on CBS between Michigan and Seton Hall. Michigan moving ahead in the first half. They have maintained that lead. Their biggest lead of the game was 12 points. Mike Griffin leaving because of the fourth personal foul. And Caleb, number 13, you can see on his jersey, has replaced him. And this is John Morton. That means that Robinson and Caleb matched up with Morton and Green. Puts Rice back out on game. So Rice going to have to work a little bit. Maybe they'll keep Higgins on him so Rice can be fresh. But then he'll have to go down inside and play a walker. So some tough matchup decisions right now for the Michigan coaching staff. Missing the free throw. Rice with control. And key player for Michigan tonight bringing it down. Ramil Robinson. He's played a great game. Rice rubbing off that double low down inside. Bill sends it back to Caleb. They wanted Rice. Walker got out on him. Scoop back up. Michigan underneath. Mills can't get it to fall. And Ramos is there. Now it's off into Green's hands. Green penetrating. And there's a foul going against Michigan on the inside. And that will be the second on Caleb. Been on the other end of the floor, you just, you'll never see it in the stats, but Walker showed some of the great defense of guarding and helping out on that last play to prevent Michigan from getting what could have been an easy basket. Billy, this game is starting to change a little bit. Yep, you can feel it. And it's because of the defensive effort of Seton Hall right now. Well, you've got a situation for Michigan. It's time maybe to go back to Ramil Robinson on some penetration. He did it so well in the first half, but he's not been able to do anything here in the second half with the ball. First half, you had uh, Ramil Robinson with 14 and Glenn Rice with 13, but they both have been cooled off some. Mr. Carlos Samo has uh, six other children in attendance. There are 10 children in all, seven of them have made their way to Seattle. A little push. Push underneath. Will go against Walker. That's his first personal foul. And for the team, that's the fourth on Seton Hall. And Michigan is up over the limit. Now, Michigan has hit against this defense only three of its last 14 shots. That's 21% right now. And they need to get something done. And Seton Hall only has three team fouls, which means they've been doing it just with solid defense. Field goals was Higgins' three-point shot. Now he backs in Gaze. He'll take another one, forcing it up. And Ramos can't get the handle on it. And uh, Mills takes it off Ramos and out of bounds. So Ramon Ramos continues to struggle. He Normally, he has some of the best set of hands in the Big East. And... Uh, Bo Schimbeck was studying that clock, seeing eight and a half minutes up there. Well, Ramos, Ramos probably saying that play is illegal down in Puerto Rico on our national team because an international ball, you can't throw it off a man back out of bounds. Rice got a hit the three. Walker gave him just a hair room. That's all he needs. So the inability to hold on to the ball underneath the basket really cost Seton Hall. Now it's Walker who comes back. He has scored eight points, and it's still an eight-point lead by Michigan. And with Caleb on the floor, you notice Robinson not having to handle the ball so much, so he's not wearing himself down. For the last four minutes or so, you can expect to see him with the ball. Oh, the penetration couldn't hit it. Yanked down by Green. Robinson fell. He won't be back defensively. Green dishes off now to Morton, and Morton is fouled by Caleb, and that's Caleb's third personal. 
Now the move that Steve Fisher's got to be thinking about making is Caleb out. He's going to come back in with Griffith, but it's going to be for Higgins. He's trying to play with his three ball handlers now. I would expect to see a little more power back in there shortly. The Seton Hall starting to get some advantage inside. Really, the way uh, Neil Robinson turned in that Iron Man performance in the first half, and we see how well Glenn Rice has scored six tournament games when Bill Bradley set his record. Uh, the senator from New Jersey played in five games, so Rice had the advantage of an extra game as Cooper checks in off the Seton Hall bench. Senator Bradley sent Seton Hall a good luck telegram tonight before the game, which uh, which the school showed me, and they said, you know, the last time a New Jersey school got into the uh, Final Four, they were beaten by Michigan. And of course, that was Princeton, which yep. uh, Bradley played for. Well, Senator Bradley and Senator Lautenberg in New Jersey got a little bet going. I didn't know they wagered on Capitol Hill. They've got a, a bet going with uh, Senator Regal and Levin from uh, Michigan. And listen to the bet. If they lose, if Seton Hall loses, they get a case of M&Ms. I mean, uh, come on, guys. Let's, uh, and, and if it goes the other way, some Verner's ginger ale go to the senders from New Jersey. So big wager on Capitol Hill. Walker watching the successful free throw. It's down to six. 59-53 now with 7.42. They want it with him. It's a defense. Ramos off with it. And Morton coming back in the middle now. Morton will try to go all the way for the layup, and he does. And the Hall back in the middle of it. Billy, you've got to get that ball into Ramil Robinson's hands and leave it there the rest of the way. He had a sensation the first half, and they have been out of sync without him quarterbacking this team. Well, you've got to think of fatigue. Remember the Illinois game just hey, two Billy, days ago. Rest tomorrow. Well, but you just, Robinson. sometimes the legs just don't do it. You know, it's kind of like a prize fight. You're, you know what you want to do, but you can't get the hands to move. Rice coming around. Cooper now with the jump shot. Bolsey is there with the rebound. Cooper defended him with his legs that time just by keeping him away. Morton now looks quick. Morton through the lane. Hits the field goal. Steve Fisher's got to be thinking timeout to stop this move. Now it's a two-point game. 59-57. Remember now, Michigan led it by 12. So we settle in now for the stretch. We know what this club does under eight minutes. Robinson's open, and coming over was Volsey. He took a good foul. He didn't let him squeeze the trigger on the glass. He'll let him shoot the two free throws. This is a very good look cross court by Mills. Ramil is capable, as we saw earlier, of dunking the ball in that case, but Volsey came over, and as you said, Brent, took away any opportunity for the three-point play. Ramil only a 64% free throw shooter. Higgins replaces Griffin. Now that move gives Michigan a little more firepower especially those of you who followed Michigan all year know that the young man sometimes can get a little out of control but he certainly was the right man in the right spot on Saturday afternoon so they have perhaps their best scoring lineup on the floor right now they're up by four inside away from the ball and Higgins was defending Morton and Higgins fouled him that's his third personal down away from the ball not something you'd want from a bigger man against a guard posting him up down there. You're going to see a situation here where Seton Hall now starting to go ahead and run that good picking game down inside, and Higgins just goes right ahead and grabs Morton. No way you get away with that foul. And this Seton Hall club can bury you on the foul line. A great free throw shooting team. by 18. They were down a dozen to Michigan. They're back to within two. Wolverines bring it down. He's not quite as quick going around green right now as he was in the first half. Rice oh, yes. hits a three. 26 points for the magnificent scoring machine. And that breaks the NCAA tournament scoring record 
breaking Senator Bradley's record. Brett with three more, he'll be the all-time Big Ten scorer in history. Ramos still can't get it to fall on the inside. Michigan's ball. P.J. really upset with that because that's exactly what he wanted to get, the ball down inside. You notice how long Gaze has been out of the game. Been a no-factor here. Robinson cutting on the inside is fouled. There's the list of the great scores, Billy. Oh, Elvin Hayes, Danny Manning, who we saw last year play so well. Glenn Rice has been consistent each and every game. You know, there's no 50-pointer in there. It was just 30, 30, 30, 30 every night. Making the tough baskets as that last one he just threw in. Of course, another thing, uh, Ben, we ought to point out, they know there was no three-point shot back in those days. A lot different than uh, we have today. And talking about rules, the three-point play will stay in college basketball next year from the same distance that was decided today by the Rules Committee. You like the three, right where it is? Yes, yes it, well, I don't. I think it should go back maybe to the international, but uh, I don't want to see him fooling around with the rules for a while. Bought outside. Not big shot. away by Green. It's 64-59. It's a five-point Michigan lead. Seton Hall did cut it to two. Morton left alone. Won't fall. Michigan with a big rebound underneath. And Rice has done an outstanding job, not only of shooting, but of rebounding here this evening. They get it into Vaught. Come on, Ralph! Won't fall. Brett, Michigan's putting the ball up a little bit too quick now. You know, the clock can, can help them right here. If they don't have the good shot, they should be bringing it back out. Force Seton Hall to do all the work on defense. steps out. Green over here on the left. Still wanting to punch it inside, but they don't have their man Ramos. So Green will come down the baseline, keeps the dribble. He's gonna pull it out. It's got 10 seconds to go on the clock. Man falls down, lost the ball, picked up by Seton Hall's Walker, and he drew the foul by Hughes. A lot of guts by Seton Hall to be that patient on that time down the floor. Gaze returning. Well, it's short, it's number 55, There's a young man that was the MVP of the West Regional and is not having the kind of game that would be expected out of him today. Well, not a good day, man. That's right. Andrew Gaze returns to the Seton Hall line. Walker shooting two. Great free throw shooter. Two streaks in college, one of 33 in a row and one of 32 in a row. We've got a timeout. We're at the four minute mark. 64 61, Michigan. By the name of Steve Fisher, the next 407 could be an eternity. He has three timeouts, as does P.J. Carlissimo. No fouls to give. In case of a hell ball, it'll go over to Seton Hall. He took over five games ago from Bill Frieder. And this sign moments ago was raised in the Michigan cheering section. And uh, Angie, seated nearby, certainly would second that thought. I spoke with Bo Schembeckle just before it began. There will be no announcement tonight regardless of what happens, said Bo. He will get the first interview. <laughs> that nice. was it. That's nice of him. <laughs> and now it is Rice. Over to Higgins. They get it in and work it around the perimeter, bringing each of the big men out here to handle the ball and then send them back down low on the exchange. Mills works his way in now for the good shot. Beautiful play by the Wolverines. Trent is. If Bo would win the national championship in football, would he get the first interview possibility to retain his job as football coach? Oh, give me a point. Traveling. Uh, 
Again, weak side defense. Been there all day long. This is exactly what happened to Danny Ferry when he played against Seton Hall, having a hard time because great teaching of weak side defense. Robinson looks a little fresher now. That little time he sat down helped him. Now he gets in the inside, lost control. Nice save. Hall ball is Morton for a breakout. That was a big moment in this game that has pulled Seton Hall back to within three points. But do you see how smart Morton was on this play? He just tapped it enough to get to the teammate and then broke long. That's what it's like to have seniors that have played with each other for four years. They know exactly where they're going to be. He's got a hand on it. Seton Hall's ball. Three on two now. Green off to the side. Morton hits it again. Seaton Hall back to within one in two and a half minutes. Well, what is save? Michigan walking down the floor with three players. What save Michigan at this point? Steve Fisher up screaming at his players. Let's start moving. What saved them has been the three-point shot. And there's another one off into Morton's hands. Seaton Hall brings Morton, who's been the scoring sensation, up with the layup. 19 points in the second half for John Morton. The Hall's ahead. They've got to go to a timeout. Everybody's walking down the floor. Mills walking down the floor. And Steve Fisher is going for the time. This is the graphic that we showed you earlier. The Seton Hall defense down the stretch. A few field goals they allow each of these teams. And now over the last 13 minutes, Michigan only 6 of 23. And John Morton has exploded, scoring 15 of Seton Hall's last 22 points and putting them up, Billy, by 1, 67-66. Brett, the ball's got to be in the hands on this time down into Glenn Rice. He's got to touch it some to see if he can get off a decent shot. Green tightening up on Ramil Robinson. Good step out by Morton to prevent. Five seconds. It goes over to the hall. That was Morton that made the play. Rice had come off the double screen, and Morton stepped out to prevent that pass and created the five-second call. He's doing it on both ends of the floor. Now Green, who is celebrating his birthday today, bringing it up to the attack. And what a birthday party this could be. Morton stepping out. Double high stack now by Seton Hall. Going to make Michigan chase them for a while, which is really going to wear down Glenn Rice. Nice piece of coaching here by P.J. Carlissimo. Morton cut off by Mills, so he'll send it back deep to Green. And you know, when you have a good free throw shooting team, you don't mind hanging on to the ball and using some clock, because even if you go to the line, you're in good shape. Walker putting it down, and the foul is called. And that on Vaught is number two. Michigan's over the limit. So we're shooting one and one, and Seton Hall, a good free throw shooting team. Brent, some of the key things, the arrow pointing in favor of Seton Hall on the next tie-up situation. Also, both teams will be in the one and one. As we said, Seton Hall with a very experienced club, their regular starting team out there now, and a great club on the foul line. possessions they trail it by two rice with the three michigan leads on rice's three-point shot 29 for the game morton he's alone as rice slipped and he's short michigan's ball underneath they've got to give it up there's three there's a differential of about six seconds on the clock so they can't hold it to the end
But if successful, they can make it tough. They can move up by three. And Seton Hall flashes out with the foul. That was Morton's third. Higgins, a 77% free throw shooter. Both teams in the one and one now. I said in the beginning, wives of the coaches are the first ones to get to heaven. And you saw Mrs. Fisher bending down. She can't even look. You know, that might not have been the worst foul in the world because of the clock right now. 34 seconds on the clock. If Higgins makes both of them, they're still going to have 30 seconds. And now they're going to apply a little ice to the young man. A timeout is called by Carlissimo. We'll be right back with a national championship hanging in the balance. Michigan leading by one point as Glenn Rice, with gaze right in his face, hit the three-point basket that made him the all-time Big Ten scoring leader. And more importantly, from Michigan's standpoint, has them on the brink of winning their first ever national championship. The last four of his five field goals have been three pointers. He has been brilliant here tonight. And now it'll be Sean Higgins, Billy, at the line. A good free throw shooter percentage wise, but just a rookie. Let's think of some of the possibilities. Got a chance to hit two, put him up three. They still got a three to tie it. So not out of the woods, even if he makes both. The front end makes it a two point lead for Fisher. Higgins' dad, a former professional player, so he's got the good bloodlines. Did Carlissimo give them a play out of bounds if it's successful? We're about to find out. Will they attack right away or will they go to a timeout? They've got 34 seconds, so plenty of time left on the clock to do a lot of things. Good touch. It's a three point lead, 34 seconds. Here comes Seton Hall. Think about Gaze right now for the three. And Morton with the hot hand. He'll jack up the three. And it wins it. 24 seconds. Time for Michigan. Now Ramil Robinson brings it down, and Fisher will use a timeout. seconds remain score is tied because of John Morton who scored 32 points Billy 22 this half step back behind the three-point line buried it just as Rice did now with a guy like Robinson tough man to guard but he's got to get the ball in his hands first good job by Green preventing him from touching it and there's their last time out that was bad play by Michigan not getting a solid screen for Robinson Great color and pageantry of this arena coming down once again in this decade to another great ending in an NCAA championship. I'm Brad <laughs> Here we go again. Michigan led it by 12, 51 39 at the 14 16 mark, and then John Morton started to blaze away. Brent, unlike Magic's game in the NBA, you can throw the ball in the backcourt, but they needed to set a screen for Ramil Robinson. Now he's with Green all alone. Very dangerous play here. They get it into Robinson's hand, bringing it down. The final seconds ticking away. Might as well clear out for him and let him take his man. They're going to look for Rice, too, if he can flash. He's going to go to the other side. 
He comes out high. He's got Gaze on him. Gaze with him. Rice shoots. Rice doesn't get the roll. We're going to go to overtime. First time since 63 when Loyola and Cincinnati went OT. Brent, you've got to put it in the hands of your key guy. I thought, though, that it had been better for Robinson to dribble it to the hoop and try to get the foul. But Rice has been so great throughout this tournament. Great turnaround jumper. It almost shocks you when he doesn't make the shot. Calculated play. Yeah, you, you, Good choice. I think you'd you can't want argue him to win it. or lose it. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. He had a shot. That's We've seen Rice make a lot of them in the tournament. This one doesn't fall, and we'll go to a five-minute overtime. It has been longer than two decades before the Loyola Ramblers defeated Cincinnati, a game I'll never forget. Those of you in the Chicago area were listening to that great call by Red Rush. They win it. They win it. Now they have a jump ball to start the five-minute overtime. Higgins controls for Michigan. Michigan gets one timeout. They had none, and Seton Hall three. They hit Rice on the inside, and Michigan goes up by two. Well, it was just two seconds too late. <laughs> But the Wolverines will take it, nevertheless. Seton Hall's ball. Seton Hall has not been in an overtime game this year. Michigan been in one, and they won that game against Iowa. Interesting, that first overtime game in history, the NCAA, Arnie Farron back with Utah MVP, and they won that one. Straight green hits Gaze, bringing Higgins out with him. On the switch, Robinson will take Gaze. And the hot man has been John Morton. Rice watching him. A little clear out for Morton. Takes it into the paint, not there. He and Ramos play catch. Now with the shot clock running down, Gaze bangs in a three, his first field goal of the game, and it came in overtime. And Brenny just hung around out in the side and lulled Ramil Robinson to sleep. Robinson hits Hughes, who comes out. Higgins here. Rice and Mills along with Robinson. Higgins puts the Wolverines back ahead. You know, Higgins was a guy that looked like he was going to shoot him out of the game, and now he's come back at the two big fouls and in that shot. Very conscious of Morton. They get it out to Green, missing the three. Walker goes out after it. Great offensive rebounder, and it's goaltending. Put it down. Walker got by with a push on that initial rebound. We might get a chance to see it. There's his turn on the inside and the goal 10 second one to the in the game for Michigan. Our 12th lead change. We had 33 lead changes between Michigan and Illinois. 312 left in overtime. Seton Hall up by a point. Steal by Green. Got more. Bring it down with Robinson. Morton was open. He didn't see him all the way. And Mills with a great defensive effort that time. Now it's two on two. Gaze stayed back with Walker. And as Higgins comes through, he drew the foul. Six foot nine, putting the ball on the floor like this is California product, high school All American. Balance charge to number 24, Daryl Walker. Is really coming foul. to the front of late. Shooting two, number 24, Sean Higgins. It's hard to sense right now which is the fresher team. Walker looks fresh. Morton looks fresh. Ramos not quite as fresh uh, for Seton Hall. Sean Higgins has demonstrated some poise under pressure. Two huge free throws near the end of regulation. Now he nails that one. He's already dropped in a field goal in overtime. This can put Michigan ahead. Doesn't get the roll. Scores tied at 76. See if PJ goes to that double high now and going to force Michigan to chase. Morton. They've got another one. 35 points. And a three point Seton Hall lead. Two and a half minutes. Ramil has been quiet on penetration, Grant. I think he's got to start putting that ball on the floor and go inside like he did in the first half. And move to Higgins. 
the three is short, and Morton's there. And now you can see that signal of the P.J. Colissimo putting his hand on the top of his head. They're going to play their double high delay game right now. It's impossible to steal the ball on this. You just have to play solid defense and work against the clock. Back into Gaze's hands, and they work it around with plenty of time on the shot clock. And a timeout call. Seton Hall uses one of its three timeouts. 142 left in overtime, and Seton Hall leading it by three. Well, John Morton with 35 points, his career high, and he's moving into some rarefied air. And you saw that shot of Bill Walton earlier. He has the record for a championship game with 44. Then it's Gail Goodrich, Jack Gibbons, and Lou Alcindor, who became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, scored 37. And Morton has led the way, 79-76. Seton Hall leading it, and that's the time they have left. Morton gets inside, long fall, and Rice off with the rebound. Brent Robinson only has one field goal in the second half. He has not been penetrating like he did in the first half. He's given the ball up. Rice open on the three, and this time it won't fall, but Higgins has got it back. Missing, and it is rebounded by Seton Hall, and then they foul, and it'll go against Robinson at the 117 mark, and Billy Sean Higgins continuing to fire away. Yeah, I, I really think that they're getting some bad judgment there by Higgins, and, but I'm surprised why Ramil Robinson is not keeping the ball in his hand, penetrating a little bit. And then you know that Seton Hall is going to slough down inside. He can fire back out to Rice. Billy, when you go back and look at this tape tomorrow, you'll see that he was not the same after the timeout. They kept the ball in Caleb's hands, yep. and they got away from what they were doing very well, and that was getting Ramil in on the inside. Remember that reverse yep. jam we had, that replay? But he also, Brent, may be very, very tired after that Illinois game because he hasn't been the same in the second half. Good pressure by Green on him. Here he comes. Big Let's see if he takes a free throw. throw. How looking? Green is there, and he will not give him an alley. Good defense by Green. Higgins gives it up to Rice. Down toward a minute. Michigan trailing it by three. Mills backs his way in. Now the turnaround, and it's a one-point game. And the clock gives Michigan one more chance because we're da down to 41 on the shot clock and more time remaining in the game clock. Now, Seton Hall needs something this trip. Missed an important front end. Weren't able to get it down the last time before that. And Michigan will look for that defensive stop. The hot hand holding the ball, John Morton. And he'll take Rice down on the inside. Now, down toward five seconds on the shot clock. Seton Hall will have to hurry. Morton will go one-on-one, -on -one, up high, short. Michigan's ball. They've got an opportunity here now to win it. They've got to hurry. Five seconds. Robinson goes in. Foul. Foul. foul call with three seconds. A foul against Seton Hall with three seconds. Brent, that's the play that Michigan had been waiting for for a long time. Keep the ball in Ramil Robinson's hands. Make Seton Hall make the play. Not much of a foul, but Green did hit him. Billy Seton Hall did not get a good play up here at the other end. No, they didn't. They Had wound up with a one-on-one -on -one with Morton going in against two taller Wolverines. And then that allowed Robinson some daylight down here. And as he came on the inside, he was fouled. And so with three seconds to go, he'll have an opportunity to put Michigan ahead. And Brett... One of the only statistical weaknesses of Ramil Robinson's game is his free throw shooting. 64%. The timeout will be used by Seton Hall. Applying a little more pressure with that timeout. And we'll be right back. Three seconds remaining in the NCAA's first championship overtime since 1963. Ramil Robinson, the point guard. And they're the parents who raised him in Cambridge, Massachusetts. 
with an opportunity to put Michigan ahead. It's a one and one. He'll shoot the front end right here and get a second free throw if successful. Griffin it was a defensive standout with a word of encouragement for his teammate. Now you see Steve Fisher wanting all his men off the lane. P.J. on the other hand is going to want the ball up to half court and call a timeout. He only has three seconds though Billy he might have done something in that timeout before nope. so that they go with a long pass here. Let's see what happens on the free throw. Yeah. Michigan leads it. situations he has none left so he now cannot throw the ball up to half court and call his next one he's got to go the 94 feet and get something off and about the best thing he can afford to do is try to go up the sideline remember the Indiana Illinois game go up that sideline looking for the three-point shot he's got Morton who's been hot and he's got gaze on the other side Billy and uh, talking to a lot of the coaches there's a big difference between three and two Illinois had only two seconds left that day at Indiana I bring it up with three I, I thought that he could fire it up the sideline quickly and then call the time and he'd have it up here in the half court area but now he no longer has that available see who he's going to use to take the ball out of bounds. It looks like Ramos is walking back beyond the end line. And Michigan opts not to guard the man throwing the ball in bounds, but Steve Fisher calls one of his timeouts to say, I want to take a look Michigan. at the deployment. Nice move on his part. So both coaches exhaust their timeouts in overtime. Far from that space needle here in Seattle. Michigan only three seconds away from claiming its first ever national championship and becoming the first team to win both the Rose Bowl and the NCAA in one year. Now after the timeout Fisher will deploy a taller man Mills against Ramos. He knows that P.J. Carlissimo cannot change. He's out of timeouts. So Fisher comes up with a big move after that timeout. They're going to have to get the ball over Mills who will try to Harris. The big man on the throw in. Really like that strategy, Brent. Steve, Steve Fisher doing all the right things in this particular ball game. See, so Mills makes it tough to throw the line drive pass. Starts when touched. Long pass. Walker and Green battle. Walker fires up. It's over. Michigan has won a national championship. And for the third time in the last eight games, it has been decided by one point. The Wolverines win an NCAA title over Seton Hall, a tough opponent all the way.
Fisher and a happy group of Wolverines. Uh, Coach, just a tremendous emotional game tonight. I know you're on a roller coaster all night long. Your thoughts now about what you've been through with this group of athletes. I am the happiest man alive right now, Brent. I'm just so proud of every one of them. And Ramil, Ramil is such a gutsy kid. And you can go back to Wisconsin when he missed two free throws with eight seconds to go one point behind. He came out after that for like two weeks straight and shot 100 every night. He told me, he said, Coach, Coach, I'm going to make those the next time. I rebounded for him. I rebounded. You went on that line. It was all there. I saw after you hit that first one, you turned through that fist up in the air. What did it feel like to know that maybe you had won that national That's so wonderful. No one's talking to let the team down because I missed two, uh, a one-on-one. I just didn't want to let them down this time. They played a great Good game, though. Job. Glenn Rice, in the first half, you were penetrating an awful lot down into the hoop. The second half, you weren't. Were you kind of worn out? No, I wasn't worn out. No, I figured I was taking the game too much to myself, and I wanted to get the other guys into the game. And uh, you know, I, I knew I couldn't win just by shooting the ball all the time. You, know, you got to get the other guys into the game. We got some of the game, particularly Glenn Rice. Coach, on the last time out, you elected to go back with Mills to pressure Ramos. Why did you make the change? Well, we wanted a big guy up on the ball. We we said, let's come out, see what they're set in. Terry, you go back to midcourt like we're not going to guard the ball, but we intended to guard the ball all along. Coach Fisher, I think we'll be able to replace that interim tag sometime soon. Let's go here from Leslie Fisher and Bo Schimbeckler. Bo, it's an emotional moment, but what are your plans for the head job at Michigan? Well, we'll go back and... Um, I think we ought to interview Steve Fisher, and uh, we'll certainly do that. It's a great day for Michigan, our first national championship, and uh, the team was magnificent. Steve Fisher did a great job. That's great. Congratulations to you and to Steve Fisher. Back to you. Thank you. All right, Leslie Visser, the decade of the 80s has been a decade of championship classics. No better way to close out the 80s than this overtime classic tonight at the Kingdom. Back in a moment. The Michigan Wolverines are the national champions with a one-point victory over Seton Hall in overtime. And the Pirates' final shot at the end of this game is coach Steve Fisher has won the national championship. Going the length of the court. And Darrell Walker would have one last shot to try to win it for Seton Hall. An 80 to 79 victory for the University of Michigan. And the Chevrolet most valuable players, Ramil Robinson, with the free throws with three seconds left. It's the honor for the Wolverines. And John Morton, 35 points, the fifth highest total in a championship game for the Seton Hall Pirates. And right now, let's go down to the floor for the award presentation with the public address announcer, Frank Fallon. Your attention, please, to present the championship awards tonight, the chairman of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee, Mr. Cedric Dempsey. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Division I Men's Basketball Committee, I am privileged to present the 1989 championship trophy to the University of Michigan and the head coach, Steve Fisher. accept this championship trophy on behalf of these 15 players and then our, our entire fans and everybody back in Ann Arbor in the state of Michigan. Thank you very much. Steve Fisher becomes the most famous fill-in from the University of Michigan since Gerald Ford. We'll be back right after this. Perhaps this will count, this scene here, toward the first interview for Steve Fisher. One thinks Bo Schimbeckler must give the coaching job to this man who has brought the national title back home to Ann Arbor. So we closed out the 70s with Michigan State taking home the crown 
and we say goodbye to the 80s in college basketball with Michigan being the national champ uh, champions. Michigan State in the 70s closing it out. Michigan in the 80s. And so we say so long to Seattle and look ahead to next year in Denver. A tribute to those individuals who have brought you the sights and sounds of this 51st NCAA tournament. And then our traditional salute to the players and coaches who have given us more than one shining moment. One shot.